After Miami, we got a hotel at Miami Beach. Miami Beach is not a beach in Miami. It's a separate city with its own mayor, and it's at the other end of a three-mile-long causeway. But it's all part of Miami-Dade County, and everyone thinks of them both as the same place anyway. Miami Beach was originally just a sandbar off of the bay, which was doubled in size by dredging and landfill. After the Depression in the 30s, America went all in on Art Deco architecture, as it was infused with optimistic futurism. The term Art Deco came to include several styles, and features included ziggurat-style stepped roof lines, shaded ledges called eyebrows over windows, decorative sculptural panels, curved edges and corners, round porthole windows, glass block. But by the 70s, they were run down and due to be bulldozed for condos until the Miami Design Preservation League had them declared part of a historical district. More than 400 of the original Art Deco buildings were renovated with new pastel paint jobs and neon. This pastel color palette was made famous by the international hit show Miami Vice, where Gianni Versace was brought in as a fashion consultant. Versace's Mediterranean Revival Mansion hosted artists, supermodels, and A-list celebrities like Madonna. Morbid tourists still take photos of the villa's front steps where Versace was shot to death by a crazed fan. Versace's death put a damper on the party, but lots of glamour still remained. For example, the Cardoza was bought and renovated by Gloria Esteban. And the Carlisle Hotel was transformed for the movie The Birdcage, starring Robin Williams. If you are a fan of shopping, you should check out the Lincoln Road Mall in South Beach. Here, it was all decorated for Christmas. Lights on palm trees, a menorah and dreidel made out of seashells, and other tropical holiday decor. They had also just unveiled a major public art exhibit of 13 monumental sculptures by renowned Colombian artist Fernando Botero. These huge bronze sculptures are worth millions, but you may need help stealing them as they weigh more than a ton. Lincoln Road Mall was one of the first pedestrian malls and has been referred to as the Rodeo Boulevard of the West or the Fifth Avenue of the South. These days it has a mix of high-end and name-brand retailers, as well as galleries, gardens, and restaurants. Speaking of restaurants, if you are in Miami Beach, you have to go eat at Joe's. Joe's Stone Crabs has been around for a hundred years and became popular with movie stars, visiting royalty, even gangsters. One regular was Alphonse Capone, a wealthy Chicago businessman who bought up Miami Beach real estate in the 1920s. Stone crab claws have tough shells, but they pre-crack them for you. The service is excellent, mostly because they want a quick turnover. The place is big, but there's always a line. In fact, Joe's Stone Crab is ranked second in the whole U.S. for annual revenue brought in by a restaurant. On our way back to our hotel, we stopped by South Beach to have one last drink at Mango's, a large dance club on the strip that played mostly Latin and Caribbean music. It was around 11 o'clock, late to us, but early for a club that stays open until 4. So, in between dance shows, the place was relaxed and slowly gearing up for later. There's 
a lot of Christmas decor, but Christmas is not a particularly hard partying holiday, and it became clear that they were biding their time waiting for the big one, New Year's Eve. When we got back to our hotel, we were met at the door with the kids who were just heading out, all dressed up, ready to hit the hot spots. But we had to get up early to make the long drive to Key West.